I'm Lacey McCauley. I'm the Physician Assistant here at Alice Ball. And I'm Karen Stickrod, and I'm Lead Esthetician here at Alice Ball. Okay, so this is a question um, that sometimes comes across whenever you're doing research on lasers. And sometimes something that we discuss with our patients as well. And I think one of the great things about lasers that sometimes is unknown is that it's a controlled heat. So it's a con controlled thermal energy. We're using a certain depth, a certain um, amount of energy that's safe for the skin. Um, so Intra actually doesn't weaken skin. We actually see that it stimulates collagen, um, kind of gives that refreshed glow to the skin. Right, it's stimulating collagen where we're treating. It's right. basically causing a dermal injury which causes your collagen to compact, and the brain sends a signal and says, I've got to heal that, and it mass produces. So it's not affecting the cells and the rest of our body. I think when people think of an inflammatory process, they think, oh my gosh, I might have inflammation in my body, which could unmarch lots of other bad things, but that's not the case. We're really just keeping it specific to the area that we're treating, and that inflammatory process that it's causing is, is again, stimulating your collagen. It can be used by it. So um, I have a little bit of a past in uh, dermatology, and I, you know, this is something I think that does come up a lot, um, especially uh, in derm consults. You know, in the past when I work, and I see that from time to time here. Um, so there's kind of this misconception that lasers are um, too strong, or that they emit radiation, which in turn can cause precancerous cells. So there's concern with that. However, that's not the case with the lasers actually that we use. And then we also use um, some light treatments as well, like EVO. Um, so we don't actually have to worry about that in regards to the lasers that we use because there's no radiation that's emitted. Um, so we don't actually see skin cancers. Actually, in some cases, there's some settings that are used for precancerous you know, lesions on the right. face and the front. So, right. And then you probably could speak to like from the light therapy standpoint. Right, I mean, obviously for anti-aging, we use things other than lasers. Obviously we use target specific lasers for, for anti-aging often, um, for scarring, um, but we use a lot of radio frequency in the practice, which is using um, light and heat to cause that little injury, which causes our college to compact and mass produce. So, Lasers we use here same. No radiation, no no UV. I think a lot of times when people think light too, yeah. some people think, oh my gosh, I'm going to get some UV damage, and we talk a lot about that with um, skin cancer, but these are totally safe and you're not getting any of that. So. Well, today that is not yeah. the case, but when I first started in business almost 20 years ago now, I've been here 18 years this month, um, we... <laughs> We, uh, we couldn't treat patients that had very warm skin because it, you know, it could be dangerous. We could affect their melanocytes, which in, in return could give them an uneven skin color, which is a lot of the reason why they want to treat with lasers. But today we have lasers that are attracted only to water in the skin, moxie, mm -hmm. glucotin. So we can treat very, very warm skin and not worry about that at all. Um, we also have a halo laser, glucotin, and, and it is a diode, an erbium laser. And we can treat pretty warm skin with that too and be effective with even um, melasma. So we have a lot of options today. Our, even our RF device is Infini. I can do on, on warm skin. We also use a cryo device, a Zimmer, which helps to cool that skin. Because it coagulates instantly, I can do that. So I can cool the skin in between passes. So even my patients that have melasma and we worry about heat activating that, we can treat them. So there are a lot of options, a lot of options today. You should come see us and we can tell you about those. Yeah, absolutely. So, <clears throat> no, not necessarily. They're a great adjunct together with a laser procedure in order to target those melanocytes, but sometimes it depends on the depth of where the melanocytes are. So sometimes that damage, or whether it's you know, melasma or whether there's a little bit of sun damage there, it kind of depends on how deep it is and how severe it is. So sometimes that topical medication just can't penetrate the skin in a way that, you know, some of these other devices like Moxie or Halo is able to, you know, get a little bit 
below the surface. And actually, earlier we were talking about, you know, the depth. Our skin is about as thick as a sheet of paper. So we have some options when it comes to some of these devices as how deep we can go in the skin, depending on what it is that we're targeting. So um, I do think that hydroquinones and some of the skin brighteners, that those things are so important, but they just work synergistically with the lasers. Right, right. I, I do think that patients can get some results with skincare. Mm -hmm. And obviously skincare is super important because some of these products that we use, like Latera and Skinmatica, they actually work on the receptors. Mm -hmm. So they can be preventative too. You know, once you have a treatment, they can keep those things from rushing back. You know, even when we treat pigmentation, melasma, you know, it's kind of like a little scar that sits underneath the skin. It's waiting to be activated. So when you are in heat and you are out in the sun, those things can definitely come back. And that's why maintenance treatments are very important. But I do, I'm a big obviously advocate of skincare, and I do think that you need to use that. You need to use that at home. You're not with us. You can work on some pigment. Um, but a lot of patients, I would say a big majority of patients, they need to come in and have some other treatments to kind of help them along.